Hello, I'm Jeff Cavins. Today we're going to take a look at the readings for Palm Sunday. The Palm Sunday readings, which span from the Palm Sunday victorious entry into Jerusalem to the crucifixion, represent the longest readings in the liturgical year. I don't know about you, but I remember as a kid growing up, they were painful. And the reason they were painful is they were so long. And I wondered, will it ever end? Well, as a kid, I didn't have the same appreciation, obviously, that I, I do now. But they were long. And I got to thinking, they're long, yes, but I think they're long for a reason. This is the center of our faith. This and the resurrection of Jesus really make up the center of our faith. He was crucified for us. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says that God has a plan of sheer goodness and he went and he found you and he found me and he gathered us together to bring us together into his family as adopted sons and daughters so that we could share in his glory and share in the life of the Trinity. But it didn't come free. There was a cost. There was a price. Jesus paid the price for our lives by dying in our place. He paid the price for our sin and brought us to himself. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. He has purchased us. We are the bride and he is the bridegroom. In the cross, not only did he purchase us, but he brought about a great victory, a tremendous victory. The work of bringing salvation to the world was long, was painful. Paul said it this way, he said there's two different ways of looking at this cross that we celebrate this week. To some people it seems like foolishness that a man would hang on a cross, one who we call God and who would pay for the sins of the world. Yes, it seems foolish to some people, but to us it is power. It is the power of transformation because love transforms and the cross is love. It is God reaching out and loving you by taking your place and purchasing you. The cross frees us from sin. It purchases us. I like what Paul said. He says that we are united to this tremendous mystery that we are celebrating now, the cross. He said in Galatians 2.20, he said, I have been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. Isn't it interesting that in the liturgical year this is the longest reading? But prior to this, you may remember the Feast of the Triumph of the Cross. Isn't it odd? Isn't it odd that they took our Lord and they beat him and they judged him and they nailed him to wood publicly naked by a very busy, busy thoroughfare? And you and I call that triumph, triumph. What kind of triumph is this? It's a triumph over death. It's a triumph over hell. It's a triumph over the grave, as we will see in the next week. I think Jesus was confident of the victory to come because even as he was on the cross, we see two different approaches to the cross. One who mocked him and one who believed in him. And Jesus said to the one who believed in him, today you will be with me in paradise. That's the confidence of Jesus. That's the power of the cross. I want to encourage you to pick up your cross and follow Jesus and experience that victory. As we die to ourselves and live for Christ, we will increasingly experience that victory in our lives. But unless we die, we will not produce fruit. Just like the seed in the ground, when it dies, that's when it produces fruit. So today represents the opportunity for you to become fruitful, but you've got to be with Christ and join yourself to Christ. The difficulties that you are facing, the trials that you are going through, give you the opportunity to join with Christ and experience victory, even at the point of great weakness.